You should know from watching the video that the key to derivatives of inverses is this formula. This formula is generated by taking the derivative of f of g of x, which is equal to x. If f and g are derivatives, then this is true. You take the derivative of this using the chain rule, you get this. Okay? So that's all you really need to know. You just need to know how to use it. It's not that hard. Typically, a problem will give you the function, the original function. It'll give you information about the function, which you could find yourself. Like, you could plug in 1 and get 3. You could plug in 3 and get 33. You could plug in 0 and get 0. They'll tell you that G and F will be inverses, either by saying this, G is equal to F inverse, or F of G is equal to X. Typically, they'll give you one, not both. So they'll just say this, or they'll just have this. And then they'll ask you to find the derivative of the inverse to F at a specific point. All you're going to do is plug that 3 into your formula. And then you just kind of figure it out from there. So g prime of 3 equals 1 over f prime of g of 3. Well, you got to know g of 3, but you don't have any information about g. You have information about f. Well, in the video we talked about how if f has a point, the inverse function is going to have that same point just flip-flop. So if f has the point 1, 3, g is going to have the point 3, 1. So that's one way that you can tell that g of 3 has got to equal 1. Well, f of 1 equals 3, so g of 3 equals 1. Another way you can figure that out, if you want to know a missing value, you could say g of 3 is equal to some missing value. We know if I take f of both sides, I would just get 3 is equal to f of some missing value. So f of 1 is the missing value. 1 is the missing value. g of 3 is 1. So this question becomes not just what is f prime of g of 3. It's just what is 1 over f prime of 1. And now you just have to find f prime of 1. Here's f, f prime. f prime of 1, uh, well, f prime, I don't know why I took the derivative again. f prime of 1 is 3 plus 2, which is 5. So this is just 1 fifth. Super simple, so long as you know what you're doing. Okay, you try. Do this one. Now, notice I gave you a lot of points in the past question. This one, I'm giving you two points. Typically, on problems like this, you will have multiple pieces of information. You will not use every single piece of information. They'll put that in there just to kind of trick you. So don't fall into the trick.
Okay, the tricky part is to know that g of 2 is root 2, since f of root 2 is 2. That means g of 2 will equal root 2. You can list off the points if you want just like this. Here's, I did this just to show you that this is kind of a uh, trick. We don't need the point 2, 4. So that just tells us g has the point 4, 2. Instead, we're going to use the point root 2, 2. So g prime of 2 is just equal to 1 over f prime of root 2. I have to find f prime. f prime is simple. It's just 2x. Plug in root 2, you get 1 over 2 root 2. Any questions? Yes, Ms. Kalmbach. You can do whatever you want, as long as you get it right. I'm confused what you did up in this point, because you said you don't need it. But what to do with the f and arrow? Right, I'm just saying that f has this point root 2, 2. Okay. This is x, this is y. G, its inverse, would have the point y comma x, which means this would be the x coordinate for G, this would be the y coordinate for G at a specific point. So I say f has the point root 2, 2, that means G has the point that is flip flopped. Or I say G of 2 is equal to some missing value. I can take f of both sides. F of G, since they're inverses, is just 2. And this is a way that you can kind of discover the missing value. F of root 2 is 2. So that means G of 2 has to equal root 2. Okay? That's the kind of the only tricky part about these problems is figuring out the inverse uh, Y value. Okay? Okay, so those are using functions, and the extra step is to just be able to take the derivative of a function. Sometimes you will just be given information, like a table or just some points, like this. So this is information about f. We have x coordinates, and this would be the function values of the y coordinates, and these would be the derivative values of the slopes of the tangents. We know that g and f are inverses by this statement. The question is, what is g prime of 1, knowing this information about f? Check your answer with the neighbor. See if you get the same thing. Like, I don't need this. I want to find g of 1. This is telling me g of 3 is 1. I want g of 1. g of 1 is 3. Okay, any questions? 
Cross this off because I don't need it. I need g of 1. When x is 1, y is 3, that means g of 1 is 3. I get that because f has the point 3, 1. So this becomes what is 1 over the derivative of f at 3. Well, when x is 3, the derivative of f is 4. So this is 1 over 4, 1 fourth. Yes, you can take the inverse of both sides, uh, which is pretty much what that process is doing. Whatever you whatever you need to do to get that g of one is three, just do it. Or if you like to take the inverse of both sides. I'm not exactly sure of the process, but I'm sure that it's correct and it works. Okay? You'd, we'd have to walk through it. When x is 3, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 3. This is telling me f of 1 is 3. And f of 3 is 1. That tells me that g of 3 is 1, and this tells me that g of 1 is 3. What do you do, Ms. Kalmar? So if you have that f of 1 is 3, yep. you take the, if you, like, the g of both sides. Oh, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So if you know f of 1 is 3, you take g of both sides to see that g of f of 1, since their inverses is just 1, over here you have g of 3. So it's another way to kind of discover that value. g of 3 is 1. It's not what we want. We want g of 1, so we'd probably go over to this one and take the g of both sides to get that g of 1 is 3. There you go. Okay. Good. Always trying to find the best way to, to teach that. Okay, you want now to find an equation of a tangent line. This wasn't asked of you in your homework, but you should be prepared to do something like this. To the inverse of the function at x equals 2. And we'll say when y is greater than 0. That's uh, actually something that's important because there's actually two points to the inverse of f at 2. So we're just going to look at one point. Now for an equation of a tangent line, you know you need the points and you need the slope. Now, we're finding the equation of the tangent line to the inverse of f at so that means we're not going to use the point f of 2, which is equal to 11. Not going to use that because we want the point for g. We want the equation of the tangent line for g. So f is going to look like this, 3x squared minus 1. Its inverse function will look like this, and we want... Now notice there's two points when x is 2. There's a point up here and a point up here, but we're talking about when y is greater than 0. We want the equation of the tangent line there. So that means the point is going to be g of 2 that we need to use. And then the slope will be g prime of 2. Okay, go ahead and do that. Check your answer with the neighbor. kind of like that. You can take g of everything right there, and then you just have 0 equals g of negative 1. 1 equals g of 2. 2 equals g of 11. That's an easy way to kind of flip-flop things instead of using the points 
f has the point 0, negative 1, that means g has the point negative 1, 0. Whatever works. g of 2 is 1. g prime of 2 would be 1 over f prime of g of 2. We know g of 2 is already 1. We need to find f prime of 1. f prime up here is 6x. f prime at 1 is 6. This is 1 6 giving you your equation y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Any questions about that? That was the y coordinate when x is 2 on g. So this is 2 and this is actually just 1. Okay. Okay. Well, I could give you this. You should be able to take the derivative of that knowing this for today. In the future, you'll have to have these things memorized. <coughs> but for today, I'll give you some credit. All you really have to know is how to apply the chain rule. Arc sine and sine inverse are the same, just so you're aware. Typically, if you see sine to the negative 1, you can assume it's sine inverse. Typically, though, I said typically already, this negative 1 will be in italics so that you know that it is an inverse rather than uh, a power. Okay, so the derivative of arc sine of stuff would be 1 over 1 minus the stuff squared times the derivative of the stuff. That's why we need a 3 on the outside, and this is 3x. That's the application of the chain rule. If you wish to simplify things and move things around, you may. This is 3 over root 1 minus 9x squared. Question? Nope, this is correct. And this is correct. Okay, it's just the chain rule. If I had just the sign of some stuff, the derivative would be the stuff in there. Using the chain rule, you have to plug in your stuff and then multiply by the derivative of it. Okay? Other questions about that one? Let's try another one. Yes. Uh, you can if you want to, just multiplying fractions. Is that cool? Take the derivative of arc tangent of x squared. Derivative of tan inverse or arc tan is similar to sine inverse and cos inverse. It's positive, there's no square root, and it's 1 plus x squared. Okay, this or this, both are correct. Final one, something like this, cos inverse. Derivative of the inverse cosine function is the same as the inverse sine function, only negative. So when you have to memorize these for the future, make sure you really just have to know the sine, and then the other ones kind of fall into place. 1 over root 1 minus x squared. Cosine will just be negative. Tangent, no square root with a plus. Tangent is always 
difficult like that. Yep. Put it in parentheses, just like this one. Just like this one, you would just put this stuff in parentheses with the square out of it. You can't square, uh, simplify this square square and the square root because of the 1 minus. If this 1 minus is gone, then you could simplify it to be a plus or minus. In this case, you can't. And then you have to multiply by the derivative of the stuff. Okay, so nasty looking derivative, but that's correct. Any questions before we take our quiz? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, let's go ahead and pass up your homework and let's take our quiz.